How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Steak Sauce Mustache, and he can say his name and what he does in the band. My name is Brett, and uh, I play guitar in the band. There we go. Well, Brett, I probably I also take the most naps. <laughs> That's listen. There should be an <laughs> award for that. I I, I get you. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming on, Brett. I really appreciate it. I've actually been listening to All Juice No Noise, your newest record. Uh, on, literally on my drive into work and on the way back, and it's been a blast. So uh, I well, you made you made it to work and back. So I mean, it didn't drive you off the road. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it kept me going. It gave me the energy. Um, but the first question I have for you, Brett, is, you know, obviously, how did you start out the band? How did everybody come together? How was Steak Sauce Mustache formed? So I actually met with, uh, let's see here, we can go all the way back to like 2011. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah. So it's actually a long while ago. Um, actually, you could go back as far as 2004. When Steak wow. Sauce originally started, Whew. I originally had started uh, a project with me and four other guys, and uh, it was called Steak Sauce Mustache. <laughs> and we played a few shows in the area in Southern Oregon. We, we wrote a demo and um, didn't really do a whole lot beyond that uh, over the course of a year. And then uh, 2000, fast forward, I think 2000, it might have been 11 or 12 or, or somewhere around there. Um, I had moved out of the area. I moved back to the area, and I wanted to start a band. And uh, I didn't really have any like what do you say inspiration muse whatever to sure, like yeah. write some new music so i actually met eric and joey on craigslist <laughs> well um, i'm glad it worked you know, out back, well <laughs> back when they had the casual encounter section you, know, oh, you, there you, go. There, you you'd look them up and you'd be like hey you know want to uh <laughs> join a band <laughs> yeah exactly uh met with the uh, met with those guys uh in eric's garage and you know kind of jammed some different riffs and stuff like that and uh, we were having trouble writing anything. So I brought this demo CD and I was like, you guys give a listen to this and just tell me what you think if you guys want to rewrite some of these songs um, uh-huh. and uh, you know, go from there. And they listened to it and they liked it. And they were like, yeah, dude, sure, you know, whatever. <laughs> so we, we rewrote a few songs from that and that ended up, we rewrote like, I think probably three or four songs from that, um, changed some parts up, definitely changed the vocal parts up. Um, and we recorded some other, wrote some other songs too that went along with that same style. And that was our first full length, uh, the Almighty Ardbok Tomalark. And um, we had met Taylor from another band that we had, had played a show with. And um, we were in need of a singer. We had like three days till we were playing a show. Oh, wow. And, okay. uh, we were in need of a singer. And so I hit him up and I was like, bro, dude, you want to come do this? Our first <laughs> practice was the day of the show. And <laughs> oh my god! The, the the first show we played at this bar to like probably I don't know four or five people that oh came god. out. Yeah, I don't even know that they were there for the music either. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Oh, um, man. But yeah, so that's actually I mean, steak sauce mustache has been something that's been around for a, quite a long time. But steak sauce mustache, what it is, started I want to say 2013 with with me, Eric, Joey, and Taylor. That's awesome. Well. Yep. I have to know how you came across the name Steak Sauce Mustache because I had been driving and I was just like, how like how did they originate this name? Like, because I've heard some really original names before, but this is by far I don't know if I will, will get beat out by this one. So I don't know if there's any sort of origin story behind the name, but I'm sure you get tired of talking about it. But I'm curious well, on where it came. No, from. I definitely don't get tired of talking about it. Um, the truth of the matter is that I'm plagued by ghoulies. <laughs> and they're, they're, con- they're constantly entering my house and it's terrifying. I'm trying to sleep. Ghoulies entering and terrorizing me. Um, there's two of them. Uh, one's name is Steak Sauce and the other one's name is Mustache. <laughs> and so they terrorize me in my sleep. And so I just decided to put their names together and create the name of the band. That's, man, that is 10 out of 10, one of the best answers I've gotten for a band creation name. So um, hopefully the ghoulies won't bother you anymore. But who knows? Dude, it's just um, terrifying, dude. Ter- it's just terrifying, dude. Terrifying, And then I also have to comment on the album art. It is magnificent. One of, again, one of the funniest, coolest, wildest album arts I've ever, ever come up with. Uh, who did you wind up going for for the art? Because I'm just curious on, because it's just insane. It's one of the coolest art nice. know, album arts I've ever seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our bass player actually does uh, the artwork. Oh, very cool. Uh, well, he, he did the artwork for that album. So I'm very fortunate that I have two very 
artistically creative people in the band. I have our bass player does a lot of our cartoony type stuff. Very cool. Um, our video editing, if you've seen our music videos, oh, and yeah. um, some of our other artwork is done by our, our singer Taylor. Very and cool. So Taylor did the artwork for the first two albums for the All of My Dear Rock Tunnel Arc and also You What We Kill For You. And then Joey put together the artwork for Super Woke and uh, All Juice No Noise. Is is great. So shout outs to him. He's he's killing it. Yeah, dude, he, he really killed it on that. I mean, I, I don't think that we really had much of an idea of what we were going to do. And he just presented that as the <laughs> idea. And I was like, there's no way that we cannot do this. Like, this is. It had to be. It this is on be. point. It's on point. It was. It's very much on point, and uh, I have said you have to just check out the record first of all. But like when you look at the album art and you listen to the actual music, you're like, okay, this is like, this feels very much in the same vein. So I, I do appreciate <laughs> it. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just came out perfect. I mean, I couldn't imagine it I mean, any other way. Like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the next question I have for you, Brett, uh, I'm sure obviously you could speak for yourself and not the entire band, but, um, who were you influenced by growing up, uh, obviously playing guitar and who influences your style more currently now? Well, my biggest influence on guitar wise is definitely Ben Weinman of the Dillinger Escape Plan. Um, you could probably tell from my guitar playing and my mm -hmm. performance and everything. The fact that I even play in standard tuning E. That's um, wild. Oh, just... I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, we don't, Oof. we don't, we're tired of getting called a gent band, so we might tune up. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're going to go to, you're going to go to E, F, F standard, probably. Yeah, we might, we might F or maybe like G sharp standard, just tuning it up. <laughs> we just want to go way up. We're just going to get some real light gauge strings on there. Yes, there you go. So, um, yeah, so as far as influences go, that I would say for our, our band and the album and everything like that, um, there's a big uh range of diversity when it yeah. comes to our, our influence i'm more of like a early 2000s math core guy fair enough yeah. um so of course uh dillinger escape plan is uh, a big influence every time i die is a big influence Ooh. for us i think we get compared to them a lot um daughters actually i think wow. daughters actually probably influenced overall the some of the sound that we have um from some that. of their from some of their songs off the self-titled album um and then also beach boys is another big influence. I, I grew up listening to the Beach Boys. You know, when I write songs, I think like, you know, what would it sound like? Like, you know, those like old timey, like videos you see, like 1950s or whatever, and people yeah, like, yeah, on yeah. the beach and partying. I'm like, dude, that's what I want the vibe to be, but like in like a math core or rock <laughs> kind of sense. Um, and then I would say Andrew WK. I was gonna say, yeah. And, and uh, Foo Fighters. Ooh, probably okay. those are probably the six biggest influences for me in all of our writing that i do i i would argue that it kind of like i feel like it's the love child of dillinger escape plan and andrew wk like that was the other artist i couldn't think of i always have this like <laughs> thought in my head i'm like i'm like this they kind of you know have take influence from this band they kind of take influence from that band but those two specific bands were like those were the ones that as soon as I listened to the first track, I was like, yeah, they got they if they're not influenced by these two artists, I'm going to be very surprised. But, yeah, we uh, yeah, we actually have a song that we we wrote, um, but we didn't put it on this album. We got a, a bunch more songs we've written that we are for the next album. Nice. Um, but we have a song that we wrote. We actually just we didn't have a name for it. And even yet, but we call one of them just Dillinger WK because it's like oh. such a love child of those two groups that it's just crazy but yeah you'll you'll see when the, the stuff comes out but yeah definitely big influences on both those bands it's like the per like i was listening to i think i got up to i have the track list i got up to um gossip banshee and i was like i gotta i gotta you know stop at number six nocturnal daymare and then i'm just gonna listen to the other rest of them tomorrow when i go to work um, it's too much party, man. It's too much party. I was just like real, just it's like, just cranking along. It just rocks. It just keeps going. It was great. And then, uh, you know, I got some real strange looks, you know, cause I had, it's <laughs> nice out where I live in Pennsylvania. So I had all the windows down and I was just cranking some steak sauce and people were like, what the fuck is this kid listening to? You know? So it was, uh, it was a good time for me. I enjoyed it. You know, you so, know, the uh, one, the one thing we've never done we did it on our first album, but we've, I've never done it on an album is write like filler songs. Like I've never written songs that I, that we've never written songs that we didn't intend to play live and like, sure. Yeah. Like have it be part of our set or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know if that works to our benefit or to our detriment, but 
the fact of the matter is when you put on an album, uh, I mean, I'm really going to say that I think we categorize our, our music the best with our last two albums, Super Woke and this one, is that it just, it cranks from beginning to end. Oh, and, yeah. You know, sometimes we listen to them, like, because we, before we put the album out, we sort the songs out, we, uh, and then we put them all together as one long track. <laughs> yeah. And then we listen to them just to see how it flows. And it's, we're always just like, dude, like, at this album and Super Woke, we, we both had the same... We actually put some pauses in between songs um, where the song breaks and then ends for a couple seconds just before starting the next one. Because originally we had made them just kind of like go one to the next, one, the next, just, the yeah. next. And it was like, it just cranked too hard. All, <laughs> it was like, man, it just, it's like a rush at all times. Yeah. It's just high <laughs> energy. It's energy from start to finish, you know? Yeah, like, no breaks. No breaks. Uh, it was, it's great. Like, I, I do, I, I'm so glad that you guys thought about like the track listing and just how like everything's structured out because it does it just has just some great energy from immediately when i was uh listening to uh the first song uh bad boy donkey island it just from there on it just kind of felt like a very just smooth transition almost to the point where i was just like what song am i on and i had to like look at my you know dashboard on my like car and i was like oh shit i'm on like track number five already it just feels like the the energy just continues on and you're just like vibing super hard and yep. you're just like man you they they really do you know really is well spoken in the album title all juice no noise because it just feels just like <laughs> all all out or nothing you know well kind of some funny little backstory on just the album real quick some information um you can really tell the songs where we started writing the album the more mathy ones are the beginning ones, and then yeah. the more rock ones are more toward the end toward of what we were writing. Yeah. So, like, Gossip Banshee was actually the first song we wrote off that album. Uh, oh, and wow. then um, Robot Computer Stuff was the second song. And then I can't remember what the third song was, but um, I know it, it started out there. And then I want to say the last, I think that the last song that we wrote, it was either Workout Jeans or it was Bad Boy Donkey Island. Those <laughs> one of those was the last song that we wrote. You know, the more rock stuff. And yeah, and I think we wrote Bad Boy Donkey Island because we were writing all these like rock type songs, like uh, Truck Nut Allergy, yeah, and Workout Jeans, and uh, um, I can't remember which one here. Um, but we had written some of those songs there. Um, oh, Nocturnal Daymare, and we're like, yeah. man, dude, these are just like rock songs, and we're like, we need something that's like you know got some heavy stuff and everything yeah. so then we wrote uh bad boy donkey island i think was the last one that we wrote off the album and it's great it starts off with like just that punch and then as it gets on it like becomes more like like party rock party rock part and then we get to G gossip banshee which i'm excited to listen to the second half of this album because i feel like you could see the transition of like from like really dumb heavy to like we're getting into more rock territory or getting it like there's little pockets of like rock, but then there's like math rock. And then you get into some of the like more later on stuff. I just listened to uh workout jeans, watching the music video, which was on point. I'll leave a link below in the description to watch it. But um, it's cool to see just like the, how you, like you said, how it kind of transitions throughout the entire record from like really heavy stuff to kind of like mix and mingle, mix and mingle. And then at the end it starts to become more like, you know, party rock kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm think, excited. I think it's good to listen to the album in two sections. We really should have made it in two albums because really you just need time to change your diaper. <laughs> I had to change my pants. I like pulled over and had, <laughs> I had a fresh air, you know, pair of pants in the trunk, you know, changed them out real quick. <laughs> uh, and I was all ready for the next uh, record. But, um, you know, for you, Brett, obviously the album, when we're recording this, you know, it's been out for, I believe it came out on the 13th. So, yep. uh, you know, about five days, you know, maybe three, four days. I don't know. I can't count. But anyway, yeah, yeah, it was on Friday. It was a, it's been some time. Uh, how does it feel to finally have it out? Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are all elated that it's finally released. Um, but, you know, obviously having you on here right uh, today, how does it feel that, How's the reception been, you know, for fans that, you know, have obviously checked it out? Man, it feels awesome. You know, that album is more than two uh, two years in the works. We started, I want to say it's maybe over three years actually in the works. We started writing that album in 2019. I want to say like uh, either beginning or middle of, of 2019 when okay. Super Woke was actually in the process of coming out. Um, I think Super Woke came out like beginning of 2019, I want to say, or end of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we were in that process of uh, that had just been released and we were figuring out what we were going to do next and we were writing that album. Um, so it's been a long process. We spent easily over, we spent like a year and a half recording that album, which wow. is like an insane amount of time. But we spent, you know, we recorded the drums and the guitar and the bass and then Taylor, we gave him the, the vocal part or the instrumentals. And I want to say he spent like eight or nine months writing and recording the vocal parts. He, he recorded everything himself. Sure. Yeah. Um, so he spent a lot of time and we spent a lot of time writing and rewriting and rewriting. And, and it wasn't that we were like looking for the perfect thing. It's just like we knew what we wanted, but it had, we'd never done it before. Yeah. And certainly. so like if you even if you go back to listen to Super Woke, like there's a big different sound with all juice, no noise than there is with Super Woke. And we knew what we wanted with this album. We'd never done it before. So it was like trying to put our thoughts out into something that you know, audibly came out. Sure. And yeah. uh, every time we'd written it or whatever or recorded it, we we're like, this isn't it. It's close. It's not <laughs> it. So we would change little parts and stuff like that. And uh, I think what it came out as is uh, ultimately just the sound that we absolutely love. Um, the reception of it has been awesome. Like, you know, when we started this band and the whole philosophy of this band is we're not trying to write music that people will like. We're just trying to write music that we like. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that anybody chooses to buy an album or a shirt or enjoys us or anything that we do. It's, it's awesome. I love it. It's like amazing to me. Um, you know, we're just here doing what we do and, you know, I appreciate everybody so much that has given the good reception, uh, that they have on this album. It's a lot of work, a lot of yeah. time. Put in this. Yeah, no, it's, and it definitely feels like that. So, you know, kudos to you guys. Um, I'm sure this is going to be a very hard question to answer, but you know, much like most music, it's it's your children. So, um, but if you had to give one song, you know, for people who haven't checked out uh, Steak Sauce to listen to, uh, what song would you recommend them to start off with? Uh, I'd say Floppy Disk Function. Oh, okay, okay. Probably it it, it probably en encompasses everything that we do. It's got some rock vibes. It's got that math core stuff. It's got a lot of guitar work in it that was really hard. Um, it's got some really powerful spots in it. It's got like a heavy spot. Like it's just kind of got everything, but it flows so well. And, um, it's our, you know, we wrote it as an opener song and, uh, it's what we use it for. There we go. That's awesome. I like that one too, as being a guitar player myself. I have a few guitars off camera here. Um, nice. I'm going to have to try to learn some of the riffs now that they're in standard. Now that I know that they're in standard. I have to try to figure them out, but well, if you need some tabs, let me know. I we tab out everything that we do. So we, we actually we for Super Woke we made a tab out a uh, uh, tab book with everything, and we're gonna do the same thing for all Juice and the Noise, where we're gonna have all the guitar and bass tabs. Very cool, very yep. cool. I have to check them out. Um, and then the other thing was I I was a little disappointed in myself. Usually I'm a vinyl fiend, uh, and I went to go check the website, and they were all gone. So that hurt my soul a little bit. Uh, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, Silent Pendulum maybe you should release some more that'd be really cool <laughs> yeah they got they got more in the works we've already discussed it we're coming up with we're coming up with plans because you know we sold we sold out of these like really quick i know it was great and it would be i think it would be like it wouldn't be a smart idea to just be like okay that was it we're done <laughs> people want them but we're done so i don't know when it's going to be the hardest part is the factories are taking sure. so yep. long yeah but fingers crossed silent pen yes Love you guys. This is great. I know that I know that they're working on it. Very cool, Brett. The next question, keep it more current. Uh, what have you been jamming recently? What's on your Spotify? What have you been listening to lately? Um, let's see here. Let's I'll pull out the phone here and tell you what I've been a couple go. things that I've been listening to. Um Oh, the new Moon Tooth album just came out. Ooh, I'll have to check that out. I've I've heard very good things from those guys. Yeah, we toured with them in 2019, man. Dude, they have just the best rock vibes and oh, yeah. Nick is such a great guitarist and writer. Um, the new Meshuggah, been Ooh, listening to that. Nice, yeah. That's just the heaviest album they've ever written. Uh, this band Sentinels, yes. been listening to their album. They're great. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, the boys. Changing, changing gears, uh, like Pacific, pop punk band. Ooh, love them too. Um, oh man, dude, these guys right here are on the up and coming, dude, and they are killing it. 156 Silence. Yes, they're awesome. Oh my gosh, dude. Shout they write out. some of the, the most badass, like heavy stuff. Um, I've been listening to that and uh let's see. Um I'd say that that's you know, I, there's so many bands that I listen to <laughs> on a regular basis. Um I listen to that. I listen to a lot of Latin music also. Yeah. I don't play Latin music, but I'm like on the side of this, I'm a Latin dance teacher. Very cool. So, Very cool. Um 
I, I I'm always listening moves. to that. I, I listen to that stuff every day because it's work. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some dance moves, you know. I I saw a rock and you're you're killing it. I, I was very I was like. When I saw it, because when I uh, when I added you, I was like, that was the first video that Facebook populated, and I was just like, oh, all right, Brett's got some dance moves. All right, that's the, the least likely to look like I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my if uh, to be fair, it was not my first option, but I was pleasantly surprised. So, yep, kudos to you. Um, next question, Brett. Uh, a fun one. If you guys could pick a song to cover, what would it be? Oh, dude. Well, we did cover Andrew WK's Party Hard. You did. You did. That is big facts. And um, we did a cover at our last tour. We played uh, Vanessa Carlton's Thousand Miles. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to find that. That's great. Yep. And um, we have some other covers that we've actually written and recorded. They're going to come out. Okay. Yep. We have to wait. We we didn't we didn't have them positioned. It was too close to where this album was. So stuff will be coming out. We have a bunch of fun stuff. We're always trying to just do fun things. You see, I mean, you guys are a fun band. So, I mean, to be fair, I would expect nothing less from you guys. But if I could pick one song to just cover that we have not covered, it would probably be Fun, Fun, Fun by the Beach Boys. Ooh, all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to hold you guys to that one. That one would be very interesting as being growing up on some, you know, classic rock, you know, that classic music. Yeah, I, I would be curious just to hear you guys' take on that. I, I'll hold you guys to that one. I, that one I'll, I'll have to get the guys to throw it together. We'll make something. <laughs> there we go. And guys, if you have any suggestions for steak sauce, leave them in the comments. I'm sure they'll check it out. Maybe yeah, they might let me know. Maybe they might be a couple. We're looking for ideas. They're looking for ideas, so put them in the comments. But uh, next question for you, Brett, another fun one. What is your favorite food to eat? Uh, that would be sandwiches. Sandwiches. All right. As a yeah. collective. I like sandwiches, man. Okay. I'm like uh I'm like uh John in um uh Delocated. I... Oh. You know oh, yeah. oh my god. Eating the sandwiches yeah. all the time. <laughs> just making love time. to the sandwiches. Have just you had spending it? his time just sniff taking it in. <laughs> have you ha uh what's the best sandwich that you've had on tour? Oh dude, that's a tough one, man. Do you think you could you think you could narrow it down? I don't think I could narrow it down. You know, my, my favorite sandwich was back in when I lived in Oregon. I would eat at this place called R&B's. And, okay. and unfortunately, they shut down. But oh. man, dude, they had the best sandwiches. They shut down after like 30 years, you know, the pandemic thing. Sure. The back yeah. and forth in Oregon really, really mm -hmm. took them down. But uh, man, that was the best place. I'm going to close these blinds here real quick. Oh, it's all good. You just need to find that in-between of just dark, just light enough, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. Good. There we go. Uh, next question for you, Brett. If you guys could pick somebody to collaborate with on an up-and-coming steak sauce record, who would you want to work with? Oh, man. It, like, anybody and everybody. Anybody, anybody. I mean, honestly, for me, there's two names that come to mind. Uh, those two names, Ben Weinman's one of them. Ooh, yes. Uh, obviously, my guitar hero, man. He's the, he and Dillinger Escape Plan are the reason I play guitar and do what I do, you know? Fair enough. I, yeah. I saw them play live when I was like 15 years old or six, no, 16 years old. Oh, very cool. I saw them back in, in 1999 or, or 2000, I think on a tour. And I stood right in front of Ben and I, I've been listening to them for like a year straight. Um, cause I was like a total new metal, you know, <laughs> not static X kind of guy sure, before yeah, yeah. I had like long hair, you know, and I was like wearing baggy pants and you know, <laughs> that whole era. And, uh, I saw a Dillinger escape plan and I was like blown away. And the way that, Ben and Brian both were just like going absolutely berserk on stage. Oh, I remember, I remember that moment of watching that and just thinking to myself, this is what I want to do, you know? And then I, I, I took that and I can, nobody can ever replicate what he does music wise, performance wise, anything. So all I did was just took influence from that and just did what I can do, which is sure. Add the party rock vibes. Uh, him or Dave Grohl would probably be my, my two Ooh. people I collaborate with. I think Dave Grohl's a, a great musician. I think he's a great writer. Um, Agreed. You know, and uh, his songs are just, they're incredible. They're, they're, they are, we, we've discussed it as a band that like, they're probably the most accessible version of what we do. If that I would agree. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. No. Where it's like kind of got that rocking, just cranking vibe a lot of times, but it's also very accessible to the masses. So take big influence from both of those. So if I could work with, with either one of those guys uh, on a song or an album or whatever, I would be insane. I know I know Ben does a lot of recordings. I th I'm pretty sure he lives in New Jersey. So 
Yeah, um, yeah. We actually had our had our album uh, mixed and mastered um, by uh, Kevin and Trezian over there at Backroom. So part of the part of the Dillinger Escape Plan <laughs> for the last three albums, and so that was a, a big deal for me to get to work with that. That's awesome. Well, hopefully they see it. Fingers crossed. You know, manifestation. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's let's make it happen, guys. That would be. I would be. I would be stoked for either one. Obviously, a little bit of a slight bias to Dave Grohl because he was the one who got me initiated in like rock and like getting into playing guitar and stuff. So, yep. um, I, I owe a lot to him. So I, you know, have a slight bias, but Ben Ben Wyman can't can't deny his greatness. Guitar God, me. guitar God, certainly. Yep. Um, next question, Brett, my personal favorite. I'm a nerd, so I love to ask it. If you could be a video game character, would you be? Oh, Mega Man. Oh, okay. Dude, he just absorbs okay. all those powers. That's true. That's true. He's the ultimate he's the ultimate uh fighter. He can yeah, just he absorb is. someone. He's, he's the ultimate superhero that uh yeah, that doesn't get enough credit. Fair enough. I'll I'll yep. give you that. I like that answer. As being a Nintendo stand myself. So um next question, Brett, if you were to compile a dream tour lineup including steak sauce, who would be on it? Oh my god. I can't even answer that, dude. There's so many bands. Wow. <laughs> if you could just, if you were put in I got, a room. I, I had this idea one time and I've had it, you know, for a while that. All right. Tell, you know, tell if the I, people. If I, if I ever struck it big, like giant, like billionaire status, <laughs> I'd want to create a tour, like a warp tour. Okay. But not give a shit about the type of money that it brings in or whatever. And it would just be like me and like 30 of my friends' bands. That'd be kind of sick. Actually. And it would just be renting out the big, the big parks, you know, the big venues and stuff like that. It wouldn't, I mean, yeah, we'd probably get like the one big headliner band, you know, yeah. Blue Fighters or somebody that yeah. would bring the big crowd. Um, but man, dude, it would just be amazing to just spend the time like hanging out with all the people that I've met on the road, local bands that I've played with. Sure. There's so many bands out there who don't get enough credit because they don't, you know, it's, it's hard to transition from being a local band to a nationwide touring band. Certainly. Especially yeah. when you hit a certain point in your life and it's like, you want to do it, but it's hard to go from here to here because of all of the stuff that you have to deal with in between. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, financially, that's probably the hardest part. But there's sure. so many good bands out there who I've played shows with, uh, just local shows, and um, who just financially can't make it work to go hit the yeah. road because it's grueling and it's hard as a DIY band. But, you know, I would do that, man. I, there's too there's too many to name. It'd be 30, 40, 50 bands. <laughs> that It'd would be insane. It would just be a big hangout. I would be so about that. I feel kind of the same way just having a bunch of people I've interviewed over the six years that I've been doing this for. So I would love to kind of do the same thing as well. You guys obviously included very much so. So I, I you know, I, I can definitely subscribe to that. So if you need need someone to donate some money i can't give you a lot but i'll try to give you what i can <laughs> all i need is like a million dollars from like a thousand people we'll make it happen we'll make it happen you heard it here first <laughs> uh next question brett um i feel like i know the answer to this but i'm very curious uh in your opinion who puts on a great live performance uh i would say one of my favorite bands that puts on the best live performance uh the anchor Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Absolutely love them. The coolest, nicest people. And, you know, it's not just about high energy. It's about good energy. Fair and enough. That's what, I really, that's what I really enjoy about them. They got the good well, energy. Definitely vibes. one of my favorite bands to see live. They are, uh, I would say, the other three bands that are my favorite bands to, to see live, they're all broke up now. Um, you know, Dillinger Escape Plan, one mm -hmm. of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Candiria one of them Ooh, can do and that, uh nice. you know unfortunately this is recent but the locust one of them oh, you know, r.i.p to gabe yeah. and uh, i know i had tickets to go see them like the last week here in in austin and you know you're always bummed out you know when they can't make a show but oh. definitely a big bummer for the reason and so those are those are like you know three of my I, my favorite live bands the anchors in there too so they, they fit my top favorite live bands for sure there we go Next question, Brett. I don't know. We kind of jumbled a little bit, so hopefully, That's fine. Okay. there we go. Uh, the next question, Brett. Uh, favorite TV show? Favorite movie? My favorite movie is Freddy Got Finger. Oh, okay. The, the best. Oh, check this out. Let me show you this. Oh yeah, here we go. 
wasn't I wasn't even prepared for this, but dude, <laughs> gotta have the shirt. Where's your LeBaron? My friend, my friend Sam got this for me. Oh, Her favorite nice. movie, Freddy Got Fingered. Um, I would say Freddy Got Fingered has been my favorite movie since I saw it, like back in two thousand and one or two thousand and two or something. Fair like enough. That. I think I, I think I can recite almost the entire movie. I've seen it so many times. <laughs> uh, but also recently to mind that movie, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, that was really good. Just went and saw it. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I've only seen it once, so I got to watch it at least another 900 times to make it, you know, <laughs> make it my favorite. Um, I would say that's my favorite movie. Favorite show has got to be, man, I, I would say I Think You Should Leave. Ooh, all on right. Netflix. Probably right. that's, I would say that's easily my most quoted show. That's the most quoted show by this band. <clears throat> Fair enough. We don't really even talk unless we're quoting from that show. <laughs> When when we were on tour, every hotel and Airbnb that we stayed at that had Netflix, we watched that show, season one, season two, on repeat. We didn't watch anything else. Just that. We put that on repeat. We watched it like through like the whole both seasons like twice one time. <laughs> Just left it on. Next morning, put it on. It was still on. <laughs> yep. It was on while you were sleeping, so you were exactly. like getting exactly. Exactly. Yep. I got you. I got you. I like that. I'll, that's good. Those are two excellent choices. So kudos, kudos. Uh, next question, Brett. If you were trapped on a desert island for the next 30 days and there was one album you could bring with you to listen to, what would it be? <clears throat> that would have to be, I would go with, oh man, I'm, I'm torn between two of them right now. Oh, okay. Give me both. Why not? Okay. Let's do okay. It. So one is uh, Beggars by Thrice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Thrice, Thrice is my favorite band, been my favorite band for a while. Not the biggest influence in my writing, Fair but enough. overall, yeah. I can listen to them any time of the day, every day, and just love them. Um, so I'd say Thrice, Beggars, and the other one would be As Everything is a Tragedy by Committee. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Nice little niche, mathcore, chaotic, dark, doom, hardcore band out of France that uh, never did much outside of France, but... Man, dude, that album, as everything is a tragedy, if you haven't heard it, it's a literal masterpiece. All right, I'll have to give it a listen. Uh, yep. And then, what do you think about the newest Thrice record? Since you being a big Thrice fan, what do you th what do you think about it? Oh, I like it. I I've they... listened to it. I've, I've listened to it a bunch, man. I I like everything that they put out. I've never like you know a lot of times you hear an album or a band that you've been listening to for a while and they come out with something new, especially when they start to change their style. Sure. You know, yeah. they've obviously gotten a lot lighter than they used to be. Um, from back in like the Vehesu and, and Artist and Ambulance days and all that. Yeah. But I like every album for what it is. Certainly. Yeah. And I can listen to every single one of them and know this is thrice. I think Dustin Kensru is an amazing singer. They're I amazing agree. performers. Um, they're coming here to Austin in the next, I think like two months here. And nice. I got to get some tickets because I got to go see them. And they, they're just, it's, it's an insanely good album. Yeah. I, you know, to be fair, like I saw them, they were out on tour like circus survive a, a while mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. and i have always listened to them always known about them but i never really gave them a lot of credit and that's not because i don't think they're a talented band it just wasn't you know i never really got into them got into them and then uh after seeing them live i was like i have to go and listen to their entire discography because mm -hmm. i think they are heavily underrated as a band you know a lot of people don't really talk about them in terms of like Yep. people that i've interviewed and you know i feel like they have offered a lot to like the post hardcore and kind of in that rock category yep. of music so you know i i like their latest record i thought that was really solid so i'm i'm curious the direction they're going to be going in uh going further exactly but uh the last thing brett uh the most important thing tell the people where they can find steak sauce at uh you know obviously you can talk about the new record a little bit more and then just anything else you guys got coming up in the next couple months. Yeah, we're on, uh, I mean, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, um, we're on YouTube, uh, just Steak Sauce Mustache. Best place to find us and find everything that we have is just SteakSauceMustache.com. You can go there, you can buy merch from there, you can listen to music from there, you can find our streaming from there, um, our streaming channels, you can find our social media channels. Literally everything is on steaksaucemustache.com. That's probably the best way to go. And check out all Judas No Noise. You know, I mean, you may or may not be like a mathy, chaotic, hardcore person. I think we have something for everybody in there. I would agree. You know, and um, it's just a it's just a rocking album. And uh, we wrote the album that we wanted to listen to. Well, 
I love it, to be fair. I halfway through it, so I can't imagine what the second half is going to be. I'm excited to listen to Gospel uh, Gossip Banshee tomorrow. Um, but want to give you a huge shout out to Kristen. She's uh, fantastic. Big love to her. Heck yeah. Uh, but uh, everybody go check out Steak Sauce Mustache. There'll be a link to go purchase All Juice No Noise. Go give it a listen. If you you know want to help support these guys and get them out, back out on the road, please go pick up some merch. Like you said, uh, the vinyl will be coming out hopefully very soon again. And uh, CDs, things of that nature, you can probably go check it out on their website. And if you enjoy this interview, share it, like it, subscribe. It goes a long way. And uh, huge thanks to Brett for coming on, chatting, and uh, having a few laughs. Heck yeah. Thank you so much.